Okay, welcome everyone, James Parker. And we've got up Mr. Zach Johnson, 2015 Open champion. Uh, big fan of his golf swing, have been for a while, so I wasn't surprised to uh, see him win his second major yesterday uh, at St. Andrews. Uh, big fan of his teacher as well, Mr. Uh, Mike Bender. Um, if you're going to do a YouTube search, I'd, uh, I'd highly recommend punching his name in and and, uh, and listening to, to what he's got to say. It makes a lot of sense. Um, so, so there's a lot of stuff going on in, in Zach's golf swing, which isn't quite what you'd call um, conforming with the status quo, is it? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, he doesn't keep his right knee flexed, all right? He definitely doesn't release that club head, right? He doesn't get this club head whipping over his hand, so he doesn't release that right hand. Um, you can see going back there, if we just zoom in a little bit, a little dot where his right knee is so you can see straight away in his takeaway that right knee that right knee is straightening up right um so you know it's it would i describe it as a modern swing absolutely right it, it, it's a centered uh modern golf swing so uh, one of the things that i've started doing is 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 start to draw these little sort of uh, lines next to uh, people's swings, uh, one where the left ear is, one, whoops, uh, left shoulder, right shoulder, left hip, right hip, and then uh, uh, a little circle for the center of the shoulders and a circle for the center of the hips. Now, the problem with a lot of these swings that you pick up off YouTube is there's someone holding it and it's not on like a stand or a, or a, or a camera, a smartphone holder uh, or something like that. So, um, so inevitably that there's, you know, if I put a little line there where uh, that tree trunk is, you can see when, when, when he's swinging the camera's moving around right so it's just someone holding it so so rather than it looking like his left ear moving off that red line i would i would say that the the head isn't moving at all right um, so so let's start with the lower body uh, right leg straightens left leg flexes right this has to happen so that the right hip can turn higher than the left hip so it's not just a rotation in the hips, it's also a, a tilting in the hips and there's an extension in the hips, in the pelvis, okay? So what we're looking for by the time we get to the top is the right hip, whoops, the right hip to have moved higher than the left hip, that's very important. And the only way you're gonna do that is by straight, and he hasn't totally locked his right leg up, but you can see how it's straighter right so his right leg is straightened and his left leg has flexed that way your right hip can move higher than the left hip right and and you know we've got to start looking more with regards to body turn um, and rotation um, instead of just looking at it from a rotational aspect you've we've got to start looking at it from a, a side tilting aspect and also an extension aspect right so the extension is just is is extending his spine up here and he could do a better job at that if you look at if you look at this sort of angle here you know this could be extended more this way right definitely so you could get more extension going back right um but you can see there that the center of his shoulders is still is still in the same position the center of his hips is still in the same position as well all right so what he's basically done is he's moved this left shoulder around the center of his around that central hub if you like which is the upper body center all right um, to do that you've got to straighten the right leg and flex the left leg uh, which moves the right hip higher than the left okay that frees the hip joint up to allow your lumbar spine and your thoracic spine 
right, lumbar spine, thoracic spine to not move off center, right? So, so to do that, yes, we want rotation, obviously, but you've also got to feel as though your spine's tilting to the left, right? And you do that by, get rid of those lines, you do that by trying to feel as though this left shoulder, oops, this left shoulder is moving down more in the takeaway, all right? Way too many people turn this le left shoulder too high and then it bumps the center of their shoulders this way, which bumps the head this way, okay? The trick, folks, is to move this left shoulder down more in the takeaway, all right? So good backswing, centered backswing, which is what we're after, right? Um, and also just a little just a little point here as well. Let's get rid of those lines on the left. Just a little point here as well with regards to uh, takeaway. Uh, hands have got to start moving inwards, right? If that's where his toes are, okay, what he's looking down at is are these lines on the ground. All right, his club head and his hands following those two red lines those two concentric circles okay and if you do that and your hands move inward during the takeaway right that way you generally tend to keep the club head outside of your hands during the takeaway all right um, this is important because it's going to help pull your left shoulder downwards your left shoulder moves down and around right this way um, but it's also kind of setting you up so that your hands can move back up and in, right? Back, up and in. So that's the inward element and the moving back and the moving up as well, right? Back up and in. So that coming down, they can move forward, down and out, right? So they're just kind of moving up and down that red line on the ground. That's from his, from his point of view. What he's looking down at are those two red lines on the ground. Right, so that's why when you're practicing, it's a good idea to get these, uh, get some lines on the ground, uh, kind of off at that angle. Don't necessarily always practice with that green line across your toes. Get some lines on the ground like that. You want your hands going back up and in, down, down that, moving up and down that red line, and the club head moving up and down that red line. Now, when you hit it, your hands are then gonna move this way and the club head is going to move this way, right? So they're having some sticks on the ground, uh, very similar to where those red lines are, is, uh, is very beneficial, all right? Um, so the hands moving inward, you can see they're coming in through those two red lines, okay? They're not going, not going straight back, uh, which is kind of what conventional teaching teaches you to follow, you know, your hands follow your toe line, they don't. You watch a lot of these guys now, the hands moving very much inward, okay? Back up and in, forward, down and out, right? So what you're actually trying to feel as though you're doing is you're trying to feel as though the club head is coming down on this red line and you're actually hitting it and swinging it out that way. As long as this right arm is still attached to your, to your torso, the club head will always start moving around and your hands will always start moving around, which is what happens there, look. You can see his hands, his hands actually start disappearing behind his body before his club head, okay? So that just, that just tells me this right arm's still nice and connected, okay? Um, as another little visual, right, just to help you uh, understand it. So if that's the, his, that's, let's say that's where he's hitting it, right if you draw a little cone right off to the right what you want to try and do is you want to try and aim the club face in that cone during your setup and you want to try and swing in that cone as well so you can see the club the ball starting i mean we don't know where he's aiming but you can see that club head you know just kind of through impact there the club head is still going to the right a little bit and also the ball starts to the right he's a big drawer Okay, Zach draws the ball. His stock shot is a draw. So, so 
conventional teaching would tell you well if we want to draw it we want that club head to be turning over right we want this club head sort of we want this, the toe of this club head turning over this way to close the face right so to do that you've got to try and whip your right hand over well you can see there his right hand is not whipping over right his right hand is not whipping over an impact a little bit of forward shuffling there flat left wrist bent right wrist right and then what he's trying to do is he's trying to hold that position through impact post impact post impact arm straight with his hips moving forward and up right keeping his arms straight so you can see as he comes through to his finish his arm his left arm his right arm should i say here and the club shaft are all in one line right again conventional teaching would tell you by this point you've got to try and get this l right we want an l going back and we want an l coming through all right but you look at a lot of the guys now there's no l so there's no release right so that's one of the big things in, in what i would describe as modern coaching is you don't have to release the club head to get that ball turning over all you've got to make sure you're doing is the club head is pointing i'll do these in green the club face is pointing to the right in this cone right green green line but the path of the club head is just a little bit more to the right blue line right so let's say the path, the blue line is going four degrees to the right at impact, but the club face at impact is only two degrees to the right. So you've got a difference of two. So suddenly the club face is close to the path, okay? Which produces the curve on the ball, which is gonna make the ball curve back to the target, right? But notice the face and the path are both to the right. All right, very important. Um, and just understanding this little bit really kind of helps people understand what I found when I teach people. It really helps people understand and pretty much straight away get out of swinging it to the left. You know, 95% of all golfers, 95% of all the golfers that I've ever worked with on their first lesson have all swung the club to the left. They've got some faults going on in their swing and the, the club swings to the left through impact. So just understanding that we want the club face aiming right but we want the path going even more right um, that's what produces the draw all right we don't have to flip our hands over all right um, so 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 what do we what do we do right in our setup to produce a draw well First thing is, for me, you've got to have this shaft leaning forward. All right, if the shaft's leaning forward, then you can get the club face pointing off to the right a little bit. All right, notice that's where he's, that's the target. Club face is pointing to the right, okay? Ball position's nicely in the center. It looks like he's got, at least one on the right looks like it's something like a seven iron, all right? Just by the length of the club and the, looking at the loft. Uh, but you can see there that shaft's leaning forward at the start and the shaft and his left arm are forming a straight line. All right, so these are the little things that you can look at when you're analyzing your own swing uh, just to help you understand that we want to set the ball off in this cone, right? And we want the club swinging to the right as well, right? It's just the club face has to be slightly closed to the path to produce the draw okay um, so where were we get to the top right so and this is this is one of the, this is one of the things which I've been work which I work a lot on with with good players uh, so the way I refer to it is if you had a stick going through your belt loops right you can see there that it's got and you referred to it as a gate right when you go back this gates opened up right so it's essentially closed to the target line now if we draw a line on the ground through the ball right that's our target line so so it would be square at setup 
as we make a backswing it's 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 close to the target line now right now good players don't have a problem in getting this right hip whipping round right they just don't have a problem with driving the hips and turning the hips um, and and really getting those hips out the way that's a very common phrase as well isn't it get turn your hips get clear your hips right um, well I would I would make an argument that the best players in the world don't clear their hips during their downswing right you can see by the time he's come down to there his hips aren't clearing they're moving laterally towards the target you can see his left hip moving outside that red line right so they're moving laterally but I would make the argument that if you clear your hips too soon, that right arm is going to get caught and it's going to get trapped and your hands and the club head are going to get trapped. OK. And as soon as that right arm gets trapped, it extends too early. And if your right arm extends too early, it will re it will get rid of your wrist cock. Right. So you're just going to dump the club head down here. So it's going to affect your low point. You're going to hit the ground before the ball. Um, so you can see. What Zach's doing there, whoops, there's the target line, right? What Zach's doing there is he's keeping his gate open, right? Which he essentially is closed to the target line for as long as he can, right? Until his arms get back down in front of his body, right? Which is what we call P6, right? Which is shaft parallel with the ground, all right? Um, and this, this for me is as soon as as soon as I teach someone this, you know what they what, what they say straight away to me is their timing feels so much better, and it's simply because they're able to maintain the lag, because their arms are now in sync with their body, right? And this is what you see a lot of the pro. This is what you see all the pros do, should I say? Um, is they kind of they keep they keep the gate open. Keep the gate open. Now, of course, it's 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 closing, but it's not closing as much as what you would think. It's moving more lateral than closing. It doesn't really fully close until your hands and arms get back down in front of you, right? Then from there, this right arm stays connected to your body, and then from there, then we can work on closing the hips or closing the gate. And look at look at how it closes there right no release and it's a feeling of his hips moving forward and upwards okay but the important thing to remember here is look at the upper body hub or upper body center that, that that green circle that has stayed in the same position for the backswing the downswing the follow-through right right through from impact p7 all the way through to p8 and that upper body center is still in the same position but if we draw a little circle where the lower body center is now the lower body center whoops the lower body center is now around here somewhere that big green circle so what we can say is the upper body center wants to stay in the same position whilst the lower body center moves gradually forward right and this is what essentially what transfers the weight this is what gradually moves more weight into the left leg and under the left foot at impact there we've got about you know the, the tour average is between 80 and 90 95 percent um, but if we go for something like 90 percent 90 10 on our left foot whoops on our left under our left foot at impact that would be something nice to understand and feel right and then when we finish 95 5 so 95 percent underneath our left heel when we finish all right um but keeping that gate open i mean it, it, it's it's the way i describe it is keeping the gate open all right this blue line here but if you look at if we draw a line through his hips here you can see his gates close from this angle it's actually very closed isn't it right actually very closed but it doesn't it gets his arms back down in front of him it doesn't that 
so so his gates open his get his gate opens up going back the gate opens up going back his hips slide coming down right he's kind of resisting the urge to 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 turn that right hip into it right and when you're doing that what you'll find is this heel this right heel can stay down longer which then helps you regain flexion with your spine okay so on the backswing we're tilting turning and extending our spine down to there we're regaining flexion right And as our lower body center moves forward, what you're going to tend to find, what you're going to see is gradually we're starting to see some some side tilting. And I'll do this in red, some side tilting the opposite way now. So let's say 10 degrees down at P6, about 20 degrees at P, at P7 at impact, and then follow through P8 all the way up to P9 and finish. Look at how much, look at how much side tilting there is now. So for someone to not recognize tilting in the golf swing, I think he's, he's not looking at it correctly, right? There's a lot of tilting goes on in the golf swing. You have to left tilt going back to stay centered. And then the more those hips slide towards the target, as long as your upper body center, the center of your shoulders is staying in place, then there's going to be more and more and more side tilting away from the target uh, coming through and understanding that really is understanding the extension part right but you see a lot of the guys now who are popping up and winning all these majors zach johnson jordan spieth right let me just quickly get jordan up here uh where is he lost him um, but you see a lot of these guys now Spieth, Jack Johnson just to name two who have won the last few majors uh, no release folks no release the feeling is straight arms right straight arms straight arms straight arms no release and this is what's called structural rigidity right which is which throws another spanner in the works with for, with regards to keeping your arms and hands relaxed, right? I mean, how you know if we if we want this structural rigidity here, I mean, I mean, does this look as though these these are relaxed? Does that look as though it's relaxed? I mean, to me that looks as though it's kind of not stiff, but there's certainly a little bit of you know, there's a little bit of, no, I, don't, I don't like the word tension. I think tension's a bad word in the golf swing. But to, to, to talk about relaxing when you're trying to keep your arms straight, I don't think is the way to, uh, I don't think is the way to describe it either. Right? Arms straight, no release. Okay, guys. Um, that's all I've got for you today, mate. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please, uh, if you're watching this outside of my blog, um, uh, on YouTube, for example, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If they're, uh, if they're on point, uh, it's always welcome. Thanks very much.